Good morning, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy here to bring you the Friday Daily Recap. I'm going to keep it short and sweet and to the point today. Take it easy. We have quadruple uh, witching options expiration. We just had that big igniting bar Wednesday after the Fed came in surprise with that no taper announcement. World markets were extremely quiet overnight. Some Asian markets were closed due to holidays. U.S. futures are near the flat line. Uh, yesterday, we saw some momentum leaders wake back up and regain some momentum, but a lot of those rallies are a little bit long in the tooth. That doesn't mean that it's time to short, but it's really hard to initiate new buys on a lot of the best in breed stocks in this area. So, like I said, I think today is a, a day to sit on your hands a little bit, step away from the keyboard perhaps. I know a lot of traders are taking that approach uh, today, so that would be what I think you'd be best advised to do. But just to go over some of the action from the last couple of days, obviously the Fed came out with that no taper announcement. The market loved it. Uh, rate sensitive assets loved it. Gold, defensive sectors like the utilities. Uh, tech was actually a little bit quiet on Wednesday, uh, some of the recent tech leaders especially. Uh, but then yesterday you saw some of those rate sensitive sectors rest, uh, and then you saw those tech leaders, like I said, regain momentum. We can go ahead and take a look at the chart of the SPY just to give you a little bit of a, a visual. As long as we digest in the upper third of Wednesday's igniting bar, it's healthy. You know, I think the market is a little bit jittery right now. Jittery is maybe not the right word. The market is a little bit in limbo. Because I feel like everybody understands that the market's a little bit overvalued right now. They understand that uh, this rally is a little bit built on froth and it's a little bubbly if you want to use that word. Uh, but everybody also understands that you can't fight the Fed, you can't fight policy measures. And as long as QE remains at its current levels, it's hard to be short this market. Uh, but I think right now everybody's still expecting QE tapering to come eventually. Goldman Sachs, who's been pretty on point with their predictions of uh, Fed policy, you know, go figure, uh, they think that perhaps in December the taper might come. Uh, there's a couple non-economic reasons why people think that September was the perfect time to taper, because in October, the next Fed meeting, uh, the U.S. government will be in the middle of the debt ceiling fight which the, I doubt the Fed will want to you know, throw another wrench in, in the market and, and cause more anxiety for the market during that debate. And one of the reasons the Fed in the first place even, I think, extended QE was because they're trying to offset the negative effects of our dysfunctional government. So I doubt in October the taper will come, and a lot of people have said the same thing. In December, people think that it's around the holidays. I think the meetings, the 18th and 19th of December or something like that, people thought that they wouldn't want to taper around the holidays, but Goldman Sachs thinks that they might just go ahead with the taper in December. Uh, and it's, it's starting to transition a little bit. I think it's becoming almost a formality that Janet Yellen is going to get the uh, new Fed chairmanship. So it's probably going to be her having a, a louder voice in those decisions. She's very dovish, but uh, like I said, Goldman Sachs expects maybe a December taper. But if not, we'll, we'll go into 2014. But the expectations for tapering are what's important and what have been uh, you know, driving yields up and uh, you know, driving bonds down. We'll take a look at a few charts that were uh, gained momentum yesterday. Take a look at Pandora. Outstanding shrugged off its secondary offering, continues to push higher. Some people thought that with uh, Apple unveiling an internet radio and competitors like Spotify and Songza, maybe Pandora was you know, going to be in a little bit of trouble. But they've, their uh, brand has remained very strong, and the stock has uh, performed extremely well. But another one of those that's a little bit long in the tooth if you're looking to initiate new buys. Yelp, another one that continues higher. Yesterday was a little bit weak early. Uh, but was able to get back into positive territory. Really nice move. The Elon Musk stocks continue to be outstanding. You know, yesterday on Twitter, I compared Tesla to a toddler. It just has unlimited energy. Every once in a while, it takes a little nap, but once it wakes up, uh, it gets right back in motion. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's held the 21-day moving average on just about every pullback this year. Uh, and, and with still heavy short interest, you, know, you, you could continue to see a squeeze. A really nice move yesterday of about 7% uh, after an, an analyst came up with a $200 price target. Solar City, another one that we targeted on off the charts that we talked about a little bit in our morning call and stuff like that. Uh, Solar City had a textbook bear flag after breaking down, or it broke higher out of this descending channel, put in a textbook bear flag, and then broke out of it. That's a, an A plus pattern that we love to look for. It's one we teach in all of our education, one that we mentor in the virtual trading floor and in the mentoring rooms. And then, like I said, you saw some of those defensive sectors. XLU is the most defensive sector. They ignited uh, on that news of no taper. Uh, as, as bonds surged, and uh, yesterday we saw a little bit of a rest there. It might be a temporary bounce in XLU because people are still expecting a taper, if not in December, early 2014. So it's coming eventually. Uh, so I think, in general, some 
some steam might come out of these types of sectors, but you did get a short-term bounce. We'll also, like we'll look at the market to see uh, if we digest in the upper third of the range, you can do the same thing for something like XLU that had a big igniting bar on Wednesday's announcement. Take a look at GLD. Yesterday it also rested after a big igniting bar. Uh, obviously, I think people were expecting a small taper, so uh, maybe a, a small gold bounce was perhaps expected by some people, but this bounce obviously on the no taper announcement was a, a big surprise and really changes the complexion of the chart in the short term. But like I said with the market, like I said with XLU, look to see how much of Wednesday's bar uh, it can hold on to and digest. If it can digest and build a bear, uh, bull flag in the upper third of the, the range of that bar, it's going to be healthy and I think you'll see higher prices. Silver was even stronger. You want to take a look at that chart. You know, I think you, you can trade one of those. You can trade both of them if you really want to, but uh, sometimes silver moves a little bit more, but I think you pick one or uh, one of them and, and let the other one do its thing. But uh, silver, nice price action. That'll about wrap it up. You know, I don't want to go over too many stocks and get you tempted to jump in the market today, which uh, you know, my theme was don't do too much today because with quad witching, you get some pinning type action, some uh, peculiar type action that you, know, you can try to analyze where you think stocks are going to get pinned, but I don't think it's a long-term winning strategy to, to try to do that on these low volume, thin option uh, expiration Fridays. And then given the recent action in the market, I think uh, you know, there's a little bit of, a li of limbo like I talked about. I think in general, it's just a time to you know, trim and trail if you were long and just wait for more calculated opportunities if you're not involved. So this has been John Darcy, your editor-in-chief here for the morning call. We'll see you back here for the daily recap.